Transportation Security Administration will no longer enforce the federal mandate requiring masks in all U.S. airports and onboard aircraft. Finally! Oh, well, that was a reaction by some passengers when learning that the TSA will not enforce a mask mandate on planes and public transit. This comes after a Trump-appointed federal judge in Florida single-handedly struck down the CDC's requirement, ruling that the federal agency had overstepped its authority. In the last hour, we got some breaking news on the mask battlefront. Biden administration officials say the Justice Department will appeal the Florida judge's ruling if the CDC says masks are necessary. The DOJ, however, will not seek an emergency stay of the judge's order. Earlier today, President Biden briefly weighed in. Mr. President, should people continue to wear masks on planes? That's up to them. I haven't spoken to the CDC yet. Many U.S. airlines were quick to drop the mask mandate after the ruling, along with Uber, Amtrak, and public transportation systems in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New Jersey. For those who are not cheering on those planes, questions and fears remain as coronavirus cases are rising again in major cities. Questions remain, too, over why the Biden administration isn't jumping to file an appeal. Joining me now, Andy Slavitt, former White House senior advisor on the nation's COVID response and the host of In the Bubble, the podcast. And Sarah Nelson, international president of the Association of Flight Attendants, the nation's largest flight attendance union. Where to begin? Um, I'm going to come to the judge in a second, but I do want to start with the reaction that we saw on on that flight, Sarah. Um, let me just play, uh, uh, I, I want to play for you. This is cut four for my producer. I'm skipping around a little bit. Um, because I understand what people on planes have been dealing with, because I've flown a lot in the last several months, a lot more than I thought I would. And people's attitudes are, for me, a lot. And I don't have to work with them and fly with, you know, I don't have to do it every day. Let me just show people a little taste of what flight attendants have been dealing with. As soon as we get in Atlanta, you're going to jail. Oh, hey, turn around. See why you're holding you, Frank. I mean, that said, did announcing the end of the mask mandate literally in the middle of the flight kind of let those a-holes win? It's not just that, Joy. It's that in the middle of the flight, people took off with one set of rules and landed with another. And the crews, once again, on the front lines are left holding the bag to deal with this. So you had people on the plane who were uh, immunocompromised. You had people on planes with little kids below the age of five who decided to fly only because the mask mandate was in place and they couldn't get their, their kids vaccinated. Um, this is really not fair to put the flight crews in the middle of managing this on our planes when people are expecting one thing and getting something else. And that has been the problem through this whole pandemic, is that this has been about saying that the mask mandate or anything to do with this pandemic is political rather than a public health issue. And we, we did not take a position on whether or not to extend this mask mandate. Remember, it's only supposed to be in place until May 3rd. Uh, we did not take a position because we have flight attendants who have been very tired of dealing with that every single day, dealing with people who check a box that say that they agree to wear a mask when they buy their ticket, when they check in for their flight. These are grown adults who uh, are saying that they'll follow the rules and then not doing it. And they were tired of dealing with that. They're also tired of wearing that mask for 14, 15, 16 hours a day themselves. We've been saying we can't wait for this to go away. But we also recognize that air travel is only possible if we do this with the spirit that we're all in this together. And we had other people who were expressing serious concerns about going to work in a space where we have no idea whether or not people are vaccinated, whether or not they're sick. They're bringing that into our space. And it's a confined, confined space where you cannot walk away if you think that there's trouble. And here's the thing, you know, Andy, um, thank you for being here. You're in a tube where I feel like people cough more when they get on there. They get on the flight and everybody's hacking up a lung. And now people are like, yay, whipping off the mask. And, to, you know, to, to the point that Sarah made, I think is absolutely correct. If I got on that flight and all of a sudden there was an announcement mid-flight, I can't get off the plane. And now because this judge, who was rated unqualified, like she was an intern like six years ago, now she's a federal judge. She got on at 33 years of age, Trump's youngest and probably worst appointment. 
she basically is one of those people who's tired of wearing a mask and ruled as such. I don't see anything in just the, the reading through what she says. This is part of her ruling. This is her genius ruling. Wearing a mask cleans nothing. The masks are only about cleaning. At most, it traps virus droplets, but neither it neither sanitizes the person wearing the mask nor sanitizes the conveyance. This is a lady who's never tried a case in court. Her only trial experience was as an intern when she was in college. The ABA says she's not... For her to by herself be able to say no mask mandate to me is outrageous. Your thoughts? Well, Donald Trump appointed 234 judges. This is a judge he appointed after he lost the election. She was a Clarence Thomas clerk. And, uh, you know, she's going far beyond what you're supposed to be doing as a judge. She's going far beyond what the law allows her to do. And she's actually crossing the lines of public health. And I think the public, whether you're a flight attendant working on the front line or you're a passenger on a plane, you deserve to have a decision made for all their faults by the people who are public health experts, uh, not, not, not mob rule, not uh, CEOs of airlines, not uh, a judge in a district court. But you want someone who will look at the data and say, hey, we, we'll, we'll do this thoughtfully and carefully. And indeed, uh, it may have been about to come down, uh, but we certainly don't want it to happen this way uh, because this is not how the public's going to have their best interests looked out for. And Andy, do you think the CDC is like, the, the, I mean, if it's up to them, they have shown themselves to be occasionally seemingly influenceable by political sort of, you know, needs and, and corporate needs. And you got a lot of corporations that are sick of having to be the front lines of, you know, enforcing these mandates. You got a lot of businesses that want the mandates off. It, what do you make of the fact that the CDC, number one, is the one that's going to get to decide whether the Justice Department appeals? And what feels like a reluctance to appeal, which I actually understand, I don't think I would want to appeal anything with those six judges on the court, because at least five of them are, you know, they are absolutists. They are, they have a certain ideology. I think I know how they would rule. Well, look, pe people don't fully appreciate how difficult the job of the CDC is. They've got to make decisions that are going to be unpopular with about half the public. And, you know, people always think they're a little too slow or a little too fast. So they've got to make tough decisions with imperfect information. Uh, you know, in this particular case, I think the thing that the Biden administration has to be careful of is right now they have a ruling that is not precedential. It's made in a district court. Um, there are a number of technicalities in it that, that means that it's not precedential. The most important thing for the CDC and for all of us in this country is to preserve the ability of the CDC if we should have a worse emergency, if we should have uh, a big breakout of cases in the fall or winter, to be able to use basic public health measures. And the worry if they appeal it is that they find a judge like one of the other 233 judges that Trump appointed or the Supreme Court, which rules against them, yeah. that will be worse for the country because that will mean we won't have the ability to That's take right. care of this country when we need to.